Welcome to the Grace Force, everyone, and this is the Grace Force podcast, and we're so excited. We got Father Donald Calloway with us tonight, and we're going to talk about a lot of things, including his amazing book that's coming out. Um, and um, so we want to start first with a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yeah, I always like to start with the Saint Michael prayer, Father, because you know we want uh, protection and and uh, you know the mighty prayers of Saint Michael. So, uh, but so exciting! Uh, I, I pre-ordered your book a long time ago, and I guess it's they're starting to roll out, right? They yeah. are, Father. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. shipping them out now. Yeah, but we've been talking about this for quite a while, and it's very, very exciting. And I believe it's very timely. We'll get into that part too. But, uh, Father, if you could just uh, tell us, you know, what inspired you and what it's all about, and just tell us all about this uh, this consecration to Saint Joseph book that's coming out. Yeah, I mean, first, I just want to thank you and Doug and so many of the Grace Force warriors there because. Um, you guys are amazing. Um, this was not an easy project for me. And um, I am from the bottom of my heart, I'm grateful. And to be honest, I'm so grateful that uh, the introduction in the book, when you flip through like the first three pages, it's actually dedicated to all the people who prayed that oh, it would be a mission. And, and that's, that's your troops, Father, because um, yeah. you, guys, you guys had my back. Well, I, I hope they're all listening too. And I, and, and you know, this is the United States Grace Force. People can go to usgraceforce.com and understand if you don't know yet what that's all about, but we're up to 57,000 who have enlisted and it's just really giving your name and email. And then you get uh, alerted to campaigns coming up, spiritual warfare campaigns, and then you get the daily prayers and, and reflections on that. And this is a group of people, Father, that believe in the supernatural power of God. Now, you've got a mighty force to be reckoned with, and they're doing amazing things. Yeah. And so you put the call out, and yeah. we were, we had at it, and we did 40 days okay, yeah. of, of, of uh, constant prayer. Yeah. And um, so, so yeah. I don't want to take your – no, no let's I, hear about the book. I just wanted to acknowledge that because um, I'm grateful from, from my heart. Um, yeah, so about three years ago, Father, I um, – you know, I was praying and it dawned on me, you know, we're consecrated to our Lord by our baptism. He's our Lord and Savior and he's everything. And many of us have made a filial or devotional consecration to Mary, which is wonderful, right? It changes right. your life. But then I thought, well, what about St. Joseph? Right. I mean, he's the, the head of the Holy Family, our spiritual father, the terror of demons. Right. And today it seemed to me with all the craziness of gender ideology and oh, I know. confused about what marriage is and all that, I, I said, we need some form of a, a com comprehensive program of consecration of St. Joseph. And then it dawned on me, wait a minute, 2020 is the 150th anniversary of when he was proclaimed patron of the Universal Church. You know? Wow. Yeah. So it's like 1870, 2020, all this craziness going on in families and in the world and even in the church. Let's bring St. Joseph onto the battlefield. So yeah. that's what I did. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Father, if you could um, say, in particular, what was it that, that kind of struck you about why St. Joseph uh, personally, you know, mm. what is it that gets to you personally? Like, you know, everybody has that, you know, something kind of strikes. It's like all of a sudden, wow, now I got to pray the rosary because something connected between me and the Blessed Mother or, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Padre Pio or St. Yeah. Michael. And what is it that was triggered in you that you felt this on your heart? Yeah, to actually do this project. This is a pretty massive project and a very important one. Yeah, yeah. I think because um, you know, when I was looking at a lot of the problems in the world, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it has to do because we've really been a couple of fatherless generations or poor father examples. Yeah. You know, with all the craziness in the world, and even in the church. I mean, you know, us priests are called fathers for a reason, and we've seen the scandals, we've heard about the things going on, and it dawned on me. Well, the greatest of all fathers is St. Joseph. And then I thought to myself, but most people think that he was an old, decrepit man who could barely walk, you know? We need a new image. We need a renewed understanding of who this great father is. Right. And let's, let's really showcase that as a, as a strong, masculine, loving man who um, took care of our, our Lord and Our Lady. He can take care of us, too. 
And so that's, that's what I think triggered it, Doug, was to really um, represent a fresh understanding of who this great St. Joseph is. Yeah. And you know, Father, it's so timely. It's unbelievable. That's why I got excited right away. As soon as you let me know you, you had this project, I'm like, yes, this is perfect because you're, you're right. It, it, the, us guys, you know, we're, we, first of all, we've been ravaged, I think, you know, the feminist movement and all this stuff and uh, make, making us a bunch of adults, uh, Homer Simpsons. Right. And I think a lot of guys just, just, just decided not to fight, you know, and not to stand up for that because, well, first of all, you know, they'd, you know, they'd be, uh, what do they call that? Uh, um, uh, something masculinity. Anyways, um, uh, they come to me. <laughs> thank you. Toxic. Thank you. That's toxic it. masculinity, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, so, okay. S basically sit down over there and shut up. Okay. Yeah. And if you, and if you say a word, you're toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. And it, so guys, you know, uh, God love them. I don't think they knew what to do. Well, you know? or, and, or or in a way, it's kind of like, you know, we see a lot of commercials out there about being low T, you know, uh, you know, right. a lot of the low, it's low T or no T, I call it spiritually speaking. That's you know, right. A lot of us men, we've just, we've lost the spiritual testosterone that we're, we're created by God to have, yeah. which gives us that desire to engage, to, 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 to conquer evil, yes. to, to stand in the face of evil. Just, uh, I think of the Knights, uh, the Knights of Malta and the siege of Malta in 1565, great visuals when the, when the Muslims, 50,000 Muslim Turks against 800 Knights yeah. these men were warrior monks trained. And when the wall was breached, they stood in the gap and yeah. they took the shots and they delivered what needed to be delivered to defend and protect. And, and that whole visual right there, spiritually speaking for a lot of husbands and fathers, we're not even standing in the gap when, when the wall of our home, spiritually speaking, mm -hmm. is, 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 is crushed or broken into. Right. That's, right. I, that's one of the reasons I see this as just a powerful opportunity, Father, to, Father, Father Callaway, to, to yeah. really kind of resurrect that, that testosterone that God wants in every man, spiritually yeah. speaking and physically, really, to be the, the true male warrior, body, mind, and soul we're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah but at the same time, Father, don't you think it, it, we got to be careful because – you know, we're the toxic masculinity. I think that goes to some guys that, that, you know, the classic wife beater, you know, and keep the woman <laughs> barefoot and pregnant and all that stuff. Uh, right. You know, and, and that's not what we're called to do. You know, we're called to be one of my favorite images and um, maybe uh, we'll put this up if, if we get a chance, but uh, it's Joseph walking uh, out in front and he's pulling the donkey, and there Mary is enthroned on the donkey mm. um, with child. And and what is he? He's a servant leader. Okay, he's right. leading, right? But he's a servant leader. You know, yeah. and I always say too that that we, you know, again, we shouldn't, you know, usurp control and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, Father, uh, when a lady walked into the room, the gentleman stood. Right. Boy, do I wish that came back, right? Yeah. But isn't that the kind of the the the, the man that Joseph uh, yeah. helps us to be? Yeah, right? that's exactly it, right? So that that recapturing of the image of Saint Joseph that I want is definitely of him as strong and masculine and yes. all of that. But at the same time, of course, a servant leader and one who is very loving and filled with great compassion. Because the ultimate model of manhood is Jesus Christ, right? right. And he's the he's the ultimate officer and gentleman. I mean, he's the leader uh, of of everything. But I think when we look to Saint Joseph, a lot of times the the images that we've been given of him are less than masculine. Sometimes they look downright effeminate, right, you know. Right. Or right. he's ninety five years old, you know, and it's not really a staff; it's more like a cane that he's got. And so right. I, I think we need to have that understanding that. Um, you know, as Mother Angelica said one time, old men don't walk to Egypt, right? So um, we need to really recapture an image of our spiritual father that is one that is definitely masculine and strong, but a yeah. servant leader as well. So you, you're both absolutely right. Right. Yeah. And that's something, you know, in, in a lot of the work that I do with men, men's conferences and men's events and things around the country, um, that's that's how a lot of men have come to me with that exact explanation, Father Callaway, of what they see Father or Saint Joseph as. Yeah. They see him as someone of a uh, just he's just there to kind of protect by making sure you know foods on the table, roofs over the head. But other than that, he's just this old guy who's just kind of in the picture. <laughs> but I always say, look, when even when the shepherds would have come to the stable, 
they would have had to get through him first. Yeah. You know, he would have right. been that the the security clearance, if you want to call it that, <laughs> to make sure that anybody coming near this stable was there for good purpose, good intention, good good spiritual, good holy reason. In other words, yeah. you know. But but a lot of men do. They come up to me and say, "Yeah, I, I do. I see Saint Joseph as as you described him, yeah. weak, old, kind of tired. You know, he just looks tired <laughs> and worn out. Not not as if he's ready to go. I say every man needs to have a plan that if someone kicks in your door, you're ready to go to protect <laughs> those that God entrusts to your care and, you know, kind of make that leap in that relationship to St. Joseph that he would have had a plan if that would have ever come to his door. Mm. But in general, the servant leader, the I am here to give of myself, pour out myself, everything entirely for those entrusted to my care. And a lot of husbands and fathers, you know, they're, they're, they're I think they're hungry for that. They're craving that because mm -hmm. we're built for that. Mm -hmm. But we're not, we haven't really had a, a lot of exposure to that. I know there's a lot of groups that are trying to, a lot of men that are trying to bring that around, but I think this book is going to be a powerful way um, to, to do that. Now, this is kind of a follow up to your, your, uh, your, your massive, you know, book on the rosary and Our Lady. That's, this is, yeah. this is great, Father. I mean, that you yeah. got one, now this. It's like, it's like, uh, you know, it, you got another one planned after this, or is this it? I kind of don't know what I'm going to do now as far as writing. <laughs> Uh, this is kind of the one-two punch, right? And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do something on St. Michael. That'd be pretty awesome. But, uh, there you go. Um, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel, though, that that we're heading into a year of St. Joseph. Yeah. I really do. I, 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 and I think you've been divinely inspired, and um, it's going to be all things St. Joseph because it's just so needed right now. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, Father. I, I mean, I, I, I sense that in my own spiritual life, and I talk to people, and they sense it too. Um, that, and there's been prophecies about this. I have a lot of this in my book. Of uh, people have talked about, you know, he was concealed in ages past. He was hidden, um, but now it seems that the Holy Spirit wants to bring him on the battlefield in a powerful way because we've never needed him more. Um, right. And if you look at some of the modern modern meaning like the last 150 years apparitions approved apparitions he's been in those mm -hmm. like our lady at, at knock uh at fatima at the you know alleged ones our lady of america which are incredible and cardinal burke you know supports them i mean right. powerful stuff with saint joseph so even right. there was an apparition in uh in egypt above a coptic church i think it was in 1978 um and the coptic church approved it uh, St. Joseph and the Holy Family appeared there. So something's up, Father. Something's up with St. Joseph today. I Father, think you're right. You, Father Carroll, let me ask you this. Um, for, the, for the listener right now, or the one who's watching the, the podcast on, on our YouTube channel, um, if, if this is new to them, mm. the idea of needing, quote-unquote, needing St. Joseph in your life, yeah. give a brief explanation as to, number one, why we need St. Joseph, why he's a critical part for us. And number yeah. two, how this book you've written will help a, a reach that goal and attain that. Yeah. Yeah. So when our Lord became flesh and took on human nature, it says in the New Testament that Jesus, now this is the God man. He grew in wisdom and stature before God and man under the watchful care of Mary and Joseph. So we know that as a divine person, he doesn't need anything. But in his human nature, he did. He needed to grow up like, like normal development. And so he learned certain things from his mother. But there's only so much that a mother can teach a boy. So he had to learn certain things from his earthly father, St. Joseph, his virginal right. father. And so we, as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, we're not members of a one-parent spiritual family. Right. Mary is our spiritual mother. St. Joseph is our spiritual father. And we need his paternal example, his to look at his virtues, to look at his 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 abilities and his role to protect us. And here's something great, Doug. I love this. When I did my research, the name Joseph, etymologically, it means increase. So when it says that Jesus increased in wisdom and stature before God and men. Well, St. Joseph, our spiritual father, wants to help us increase. So I started to call St. Joseph the increaser, right? <laughs> nice. Because Mary's the one who magnifies the Lord, right? St. Joseph is the increaser. He increases. And so that, to me, that's manly. Like Jesus called James and John sons of thunder and Peter the rock. Well, Joseph is the increaser. 
I love that's that. That's awesome. That's good. That's good. All right. Well, good. That um, We're going to take a break. And when we come back, another thing that uh, Father Don Calloway is known for is the power of the rosary. So we, we want to talk about that when we get back. St. Joseph was a man who had the single most important job, the job of caring for and protecting Jesus, the Son of God. Who was St. Joseph? Was he a man of integrity, a man of God, a man who was special, a man who was better than others? Maybe. But more than this, St. Joseph was a man who did what he had to do, and he did his best to do it well. He put in the effort. St. Joseph, pray for us. Hey, we're back, everybody. U.S. Grace Force Podcast here. I'm Doug Barry, along with Father Richard Heilman and Father Donald Calloway. I am honored to be in the presence of two great priests who are doing great work for the church today. And gentlemen, that's not just to flatter you, because I know that would be sinful to try to flatter you. That's, that's the truth. <laughs> You're doing great work. Um, and inspiration, I, I really, I know this for many, many people around the world. Father Calloway, on that point of the work you're doing in inspiration for the world, um, you have been a tremendous proponent and warrior for the rosary. Mm. We pray the most holy rosary and our blessed mother, devotion with our blessed, to our blessed mother and a relationship with our blessed mother. Uh, you wrote a really powerful book about this a while back, um, mm. but I know you speak a lot about it. She had a lot to do with your conversion. I remember we had yeah. you on Life on the Rock years ago and interviewed yeah. you. You talked about that, your surfing days and getting kicked out of the country of Japan and <laughs> just an amazing story. But Our Lady really has a spe very special place in your heart, and which I find amazing. I was just on the phone with someone earlier today, a woman from the Dallas area, Dallas, Texas area, and she's telling me about a priest who does not want the rosary prayed before masses, does not really want, not only doesn't want necessarily to encourage devotion to Our Lady in the rosary, but actually is an obstacle to it Unbelievable. oftentimes. And, and I hear stories about this periodically around the country. I know both you two gentlemen do too, but you know, Father Donald, if you could tell us a little bit about just from your position, your heart, yeah. devotion to Mary and the power of the rosary, why? Yeah, it's huge, brother. And um, it breaks my heart to hear stories like that because I hear them too on occasion. And, you know, I'm, I'm just reminded of, you know, who was the first person that the rosary was given to a priest, a priest, St. Dominic. And so, you know, it's, it's priests who, who should be armed with that spiritual weapon. We should be the ones leading the charge, leading the people in that prayer, uh, and unsheathing that sword. Um, and so nobody slays a dragon without a sword, right? Well, we've got this, this spiritual dragon, this seven-headed hydra who wants to, you know, breathe fire into us, eternal fire, and who's going to lead the charge? We sh the priests should be the ones doing this. We should be the ones leading those rosaries, whether it's before or after Mass or at, a, at another time. I mean, to, to hear a priest saying that he doesn't approve it or doesn't want it done, it's like you've shelved your weapon, Father. Mm -hmm. You've shelved your weapon. I mean, how, how are people going to know that they can run to you when they're being attacked? <laughs> you know? yeah. So to me, I mean, Our Lady... As we know, scripturally, it's her foot that God uses to crush the serpent. Um, and it's that blessed weapon of the rosary, the Bible on a set of beads, the word of God that slays that dragon. And so that's why we need it, guys. Yeah. You know, I, I have a claim to fame. You came to my parish and you gave a talk. <laughs> I, and uh, you, you told us what you were doing, too, because you wanted yeah. to make a recording. Yeah, and it, wasn't it called the power of the rosary? The, the it was name called of the, uh, the spirit, the the, hmm, the rosary, the spiritual sword of Mary. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And uh, it, it, I, I'm telling you, you went on. I think two hours, yeah. maybe longer. It was like two and a half hours, and the, the the church was packed. And you often wonder if you lose people over those two and a half hours. They came out of that church with their eyes like saucers, like. I, that was the most unbelievable thing I've ever heard in my life. And it was father. And, and it, of course you um, did whatever editing with that talk to make the, the DVD people have to get that DVD. Mm -hmm. uh, f first of all, cause it was done in my church, but, <laughs> but it is probably the most powerful talk I ever heard on the rosary. But what you did is you broke down, you know, all the history of, of how the rosary has impacted yeah. Uh, the world and, 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 and all the warriors that use the rosary. Mm -hmm. Um, but you emboldened me even more, you know, I've got that combat rosary Love it. that I've developed. Yeah. 
And uh, that's um, uh, based on the World War I military issue rosary. Um, if people haven't heard about it yet, I just quickly want to talk about it. But I found that rosary um, in a um, uh, eBay and because I wanted to find a muscular masculine rosary for men. And I found out, I got the whole history about it, but very quickly, it was the government made rosaries for soldiers, believe it or not, but they only did it once. Yeah. And they did it all in 1916, and they made so many that they had enough life left over for World War II. But it's made out of that pull chain, like for dog tags. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody had done a pull chain rosary until I started doing it again. And uh, and it's really it's really caught on. But it, it's meant to highlight again what you do so so effectively mm. is that it's our weapon. Padre Pio would say, "Bring me my weapon," right? right. You know, and, and it's it, it is it's a real weapon. And mm. I, I've been saying that the period of time that we're living in right now in the church, like that priest that we were just talking about. Is it, and I I frame it this way. I think I think a lot of priests, a lot of religious leaders, bishops, are embarrassed by the fact that we believe in miracles mm. and the power of God. Mm. You know, and they want to downplay that. I experienced that in seminary myself in my formation. Um, I had a, I saw a guy get a great guy get kicked out of seminary because he has statue of Mary in his room. Mm -hmm. That was considered fanat fanaticism at the time. Um, so, but we're climbing out of that. We're and we're doing well because of inspirational people like you, Father. Mm. that are helping us all understand <laughs> and i think especially the saint josephs of mm. our time the men yeah that that they're, they're called to, to to lead to be spiritual leaders of their family and you got to carry that rosary brother yeah. that brings that brings blessings to you and you got to lead it in your family every night mm. and you're gonna you're gonna open up uh, a wellspring of graces into your family through all that is that right yeah. Oh, absolutely. No question. I mean, this is why for so long the, the church and the pontiffs promoted the family rosary because you can gain every member of a family. If you pray the rosary in your home on a, on a daily basis, you gain each member gains a plenary indulgence. Yeah. So we're talking you're, un, you're unleashing so much grace. That, that affects not only time, but eternity. You can, you can be emptying purgatory. I mean, imagine that if you have a family, let's say you got five to nine kids and every day you're praying that as a family, each member is getting a plenary indulgence. And if you're living a close sacramental life of the church, my gracious, you can be doing so much good. Yeah. You know? yeah. Father, yeah. Father, can you, can you um, just again, for the listeners and viewers, I mean, we're getting all different places where a person is in their faith <laughs> watching and listening. Yeah. Find plenary indulgence what that means and why that's so important. Cause you made, you made it sound like that's a big deal. Plenary. It's like kind of like winning the lottery in a way it is, but, um, it is. but, but yeah. what, what does, uh, what does that mean for people? Yeah. So, you know, when we uh, are forgiven our sins through absolution, we go to confession, the Lord forgives us, but there's still temporal punishment due to our sins. There's effects from our sins. And that's, you know, why we have purgatory. So, we, we, we're still going to have to pay that debt of justice to, for the damage that we've done. So we're forgiven. Just like if you, if you break your neighbor's window, your neighbor's, if he's a good guy, he's probably going to forgive you, but you're, you still got to re, re you know, give him a new window. You know, right, there's a lot right. of justice there. So we have a temporal punishment due to our sins, which we pay off in purgatory. We're purified, we're cleansed. So when you get a partial, or a plenary indulgence, which is not magic. It's a father's love. He's a gracious father. And he's, he's, we got the storehouse of the church with all these blessings. And there's certain things that we can do to obtain these for ourselves or for a soul in purgatory. So if you gain a partial indulgence, it helps them a little bit. If you gain a plenary indulgence, because that means full, it means all, you can actually take us, help a soul come out of purgatory and enter into the beatific vision. Exactly. That's exactly. a gift. What a gift. Yeah. 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 And when you pray for, when you pray for a soul in purgatory, I teach and the church does, but I, I use my own words that are hopefully are inspirational, but you actually are building your holy alliance. Yeah. So in other words, it was, um, uh, Fulton Sheen who said, uh, when we meet them on that, on that day, many will come toward us thanking us for what? Because we prayed that for them uh, out of purgatory and into heaven, mm -hmm. and and, and, yeah. and you know they're grateful souls. See, yeah. so so they end up being um, close to us 
and, yeah. and prayer warriors for us. It's amazing. I actually teach quite um, uh, in depth about it in the book right up here called the uh, Church Militant Field Manual. And yeah. um, uh, I, I really get into this and what a plenary indulgence is. You, 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 uh, you addressed it very effectively. But, uh, you know, what it is, it's, it's God, you know, utilizing something to teach us how to be better at be as children of God. So he offers these things, pray a rosary with your family and you get a plenary yeah. indulgence. Well, what's he doing there? He's teaching us it's good to pray a rosary with your family, right? Oh. The other thing I want to highlight too about praying a rosary with your family is I saw statistics and, we're, you know, we have a, a divorce epidemic right now. It's crazy. But they talked about, you know, if you go to church, if you do this, you do but if, 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 the, if the father is praying the rosary as a family, the divorce rate is like 0.06. Wow. You know, it, it's, it's, it's like nothing, which means what? You're, you're inviting, you're opening a door to this supernatural grace pouring into your family, okay? And, and, the, and the, 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 the mantle of the Blessed Mother. You're just pouring goodness into your family. Please, please, please out there, if you haven't decided to pray a rosary together as a couple, and if your children are there, uh, please do that. Right? Right, Father? Absolutely. No doubt about it. That is one of the best things that you can do. And imagine when, when children, sons and daughters, and the wife sees that it's the husband who's leading it. This is that servant leadership we're talking about. On his knees, Wow, that's gonna that's that is staying power, right? That boy's gonna want to be like dad, and that girl is gonna want a man who's like dad, who's 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 strong and yet not ashamed to go on his knees in front of his family and pray. And I tell people, I tell fathers, look, you know, when I was uh, younger, my father literally gave me a rifle. He passed it on to me before he died, and I still have that rifle. I'm not gonna get rid of it because my dad gave me that. Well. Same thing with the rosary. Imagine if fathers to their sons said, son, this rosary here is the one I had when I met your, your, your mother, the woman of my heart. Yeah. I'm giving this to you, son. He's not going to get rid of that rosary. He's going to keep that rosary. You know, so these are traditions that we can do and, and really to embolden the family. Yep. Can I go back to something, if you don't mind, Father? Um, you, you talked about purgatory. Both of you mentioned it. Um, and you talk about how it you know, can shorten our time in purgatory, help get other souls out of purgatory. Mm -hmm. um, the understanding of purgatory uh, is not quite what it used to be. Uh, mm -hmm. People will tell me sometimes, well, if I at least make it to purgatory, I'm happy about that. <laughs> so they're shooting for second place already. They're yeah. not shooting for yeah. heaven, right? Yeah. Um, but purgatory, I know saints have described it as similar to hell in the punishment part, but there's mm. hope because we know God's love is there and we're moving towards eternity with God. Yeah. But in general, can, can you, Father Callaway and Father Hammond, to just speak to the audience a little bit about, to all of us, about why, why purgatory, while it's a great, great gift of mercy of God, mm. shouldn't be striving for purgatory Right, We're striving to make that as short as possible and shoot for heaven. So, what's yeah. the big, the big deal about purgatory? Yeah, I mean, it is a place of God's mercy, and, and we thank God for it. Yes, but you're right. We need to aim high. Look at the saints, right? I don't know of any saint who said, "I'm aiming for purgatory." <laughs> I mean, they all want they want that intimacy with God immediately. They don't want to deprive be deprived of any joy of seeing God, you know, and so. That's our model, you know, as the saints. And, and if we lead a life of holiness, of sacramental life, of striving for virtue, even though it's a hard road, you know, we, we, God is going to equip us with all that we need to finish the race. And so let's, let's run strong. Let's go all in uh, so that, uh, you know, we're aiming high. That's what you do in archery, right? You don't aim in the middle. You're going to hit the dirt. You aim high. Then you hit the target, right? Oh, that's why I keep missing when I'm. <laughs> that's okay now i think now you're right though i keep oh i'm oh, boom all right it's got a little higher okay <laughs> but you know Father, right. on that point i gotta say that why would we men not relate to that because we don't you know at the time we record this we're watching the packers yay just made the playoffs yesterday right <laughs> yeah but you know we're not if you're a packer fan or a patriot fan or cowboy fan whatever you know you're not aiming for your team to just make the playoffs. Right. You're aiming for your team to win the Super Bowl. 
yes. you know, or whatever your sports gig is, you're aiming for the championship and the victory in that championship, yeah. you know? And so we men, especially, I would think would understand that when it comes to anything we do, don't yeah. aim for second or third, because you'll probably end up in fourth or fifth. You got to aim for, for the top. You got to aim to succeed in good, holy ways, but especially in the area and the realm of the spiritual life for ourselves and those entrusted to our care. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree, brother. Absolutely. We got to aim. Yeah, I, yep. Uh, and uh, I want to, I want to close with this. I, I'm going to brag a little bit, but uh, <laughs> you father were probably the best uh, priest I've ever had in my parish until last weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, I wish I could have been there. Oh. <laughs> we had Cardinal Burke here and a pontifical high mass at the throne. Uh, and I, in the, we'll put up some pictures of that too, I hope. And, uh, but wow. And, and I had the foresight to get like 200 combat rosaries and I put them on a beautiful platter, two platters actually. And, uh, I asked Cardinal Burke to bless them. So I've got 200 That's combat awesome. rosaries. There it yeah. Is. There it is. There's one of them right there. <laughs> I wish I could reach to the screen and take that from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you one father. You deserve it. Yeah. A and I had an exorcist here this weekend and I said, can you exercise the Benedict medals? So it's blessed by Cardinal Burke and then exercised by the actual exorcist. Um, th so they're pretty powerful. So you'll get one father. Thanks. Maybe, maybe you too, Doug. No, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll, we'll close it there for this segment and we'll be right back. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who asked for thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Welcome back, everybody. And so, again, we're so excited to have Father Callaway with us here. And this has been tremendous, Father, and yeah. thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to do our third segment here on something I think all of us have addressed and so needed to be addressed is uh, the challenges of Catholic men. They're the, 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 the challenges that Catholic men are facing right now uh, in our times. And we, we touched on it, I think, a little earlier um, you know, I started um, a what I call the Knights of Divine Mercy uh, several years ago, and it, it asked men to come out once a month on a Friday night and to kneel before the Blessed Sacrament and to uh, to receive uh, the um, forgiveness of our Lord in the Sacrament of Penance, and then to get an inspiring speech, okay, and then uh, do benediction, and then have a fraternal social afterwards. It's been amazing, okay? Uh, but what has it done is it's, it's given men the ingredients that they need uh, to understand what it means to be that St. Joseph for their family, for the world, uh, but, but also to get them together with other men is so important that are, are doing this as well. And I worried early, early on that the, the women might think, oh, geez, you're, you know, you're leaving your family. And, and I came to find out that the, the women were pushing the guys out the door because they want <laughs> to have strong Catholic men. Yeah. So, Father, you know, what are some of the challenges that men are facing right now, well, do, do you think? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, for sure. I would say, you know, as a priest, you know, Father, you and I would understand this. Hearing confessions, obviously, I can't tell you the content of what I'm hearing, but the whole lust, especially pornography, is huge. Oh, my. It's a plague. It's a spiritual plague on the planet right now. And it's... um, You it's know, I heard a statistic uh, recently. 80% of men yeah. are clicking on porn regularly. 80%. I'm not surprised that that's an alignment with my, the confessions I hear. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's everywhere. And the sad thing is that, uh, you know, every year it seems the, the age is being lowered of when boys especially are looking at the stuff on their iPhones or whatever. I mean, it is just unbelievable. And so, I mean, we really need to counter this, uh, 
in, in the men because if we don't, um, it's bad now. It's only going to get worse. I mean, we're porn. It destroys marriages. It. Our Lord said, uh, "The pure of heart see God." Right. When you have a heart filled with lust, you're not seeing right. Your vision. Well, is you have wrong. no. You have no grace. You have no That's grace. Right. That's yeah, right. So, so you want to be supernaturally empowered to be St. Joseph of, of your home. You're not. So what do you end up being? You, be, you end up being slothful, you know, Yes. A, 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 not only in your spiritual life, because when you have no grace, yeah. uh, spiritual things, you begin to even detest them, you know, yeah. but it's, it's like climbing Mount Everest to pick up a rosary when you don't have grace on you. you know? Yeah. And, and, and it leads to a, a, a utilitarian type of type of life with everything in your life. So you begin to use things just for pleasure, right. no matter what it is. If it's, right. even if it's just, uh, including the wife, Oh, especially the wife. Yeah. yeah. But everything, even inanimate things, you'll begin to use everything just for your momentary satisfaction. Right. And that is extremely dangerous, uh, in, in, in a spirit, in the spiritual life. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to, to turn everything, as we objectify the human person, we objectify, even start objectifying ourselves yeah. even more. So we objectify everything else, like you said. And I remember reading a quote from a man who was a recovering addict, you know, years ago. And he said that it, it's hard for people to understand that when you deal with this addiction, that pretty soon every woman you look at is graded on what you've compared them to in your mind just almost second nature is he, he says right. it, you just can't control the fact that all of a sudden you're starting to look at them compared to, you know, this centerfold or this image or whatever it was you looked at. And pretty soon other things, as you said, start to fall into that same category and right. you can't see the goodness of God through something that can be used for his glory. If it doesn't shine and, and really jump out at you like these images of pornography constantly are trying to say, it's got to be the wow factor on everything. Yeah, it's just such a deception. It know? is. And when you say about the age, father is lowering. I, I've heard uh, from a couple of men's groups, or men's conferences. I was speaking at in the last year. Two different priests publicly said that they're hearing it as young as even eleven and twelve. Is that accurate from what you're saying too? Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. Um, because you know they've got all these devices, yeah. and it's just it's everywhere. It's and it's it's so easily accessible. That, um, you know, this stuff, when I was a young man, it was difficult, you know, to, to, it was everywhere. But today, wow. I mean, my heart goes out to this young generation. We, we need some strong leadership to just start, you know, turning this around or we're in big trouble, guys. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm so, here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing more people hitting this issue. And, and one of the big ones, I think, is Matt Walsh. He's yeah. hitting pornography right now. Mm. And you're hitting it, Father, yeah. with consecration to Saint Joseph. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, the chaste heart of Saint Joseph. Mm -hmm. I mean, that if if you if you leapfrog over chastity, you know, uh, when you're trying to be a Saint Joseph, you're yeah. missing the point completely. I mean, he he holds that lily, you know, and that's the lily of purity, right? Yes. And, and so, it, you know, this is the crisis right now, I believe, for men. is it, And again, like I said, if, if you don't have grace on you, you might still be on the team, but the coach can't use you, okay? So you're sitting on the bench. In other words, you know, uh, he's, not, uh, he's not giving you anything, and, and, you, and you literally are just sitting around like a vegetable, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. and looking for the next source of pleasure uh, yeah. when you lose that grace. Yeah. So if we don't hit this, and that's why I think 2020, I, I'm going to find it very interesting. I'm going to put my eggs in this basket. I know you are with, with St. Joseph. Guys like Matt Walsh and many others are picking it up too. But yeah. we got to hit this. And I, I, I pray, I pray, I pray that they outlaw pornography on the internet. And I think what's going to happen is, is it's going to be not only spiritual leaders, but it's going to be scientists and psychologists right. that are going to hit this and, well, and realize I, what the destruction yeah, is to. In, in, a, in a previous episode, Father, when I know we, we addressed it briefly and um, you know, we threw up an image of a brain scan that shows the brain, a normal brain, a healthy brain. And we can pop that up here again now. Um, a healthy brain and then a brain that's addicted to pornography. Um, and you know, there's another image of a brain uh, on cocaine or, or heroin of some sort, some of the drug and pornography and the, the brain addicted pornography in some ways looks more brutalized 
than even the one on cocaine or heroin or whatever drug it is, because it, it just the, the way the chemical imbalance throws everything off. But here's the exciting thing back to the previous segment, we're talking about the rosary is I know there has been evidence out there studied and tested evidence that praying the rosary as a, as a, as a beautiful meditation can actually help to physically mm. repair the brain because yes. of the neuroplasticity of the brain, that the chemical imbalance from overstimulation of the pleasure center, the dopamine hits and so forth that we get, can yes. be repaired. And the meditation of the rosary is the most powerful form yes. scientists have found to do that. That yes. is amazing. Showing is. God doesn't just do spiritual things. He's okay. doing it physically. Yeah. Oh, mic drop. I dropped my mic, but it's on a stand. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. It's God's mic drop. You know, pray that rosary. Our blessed mother's going to work not just spiritually, which is first and foremost the most important, but naturally by helping to heal the brain. Yeah, I, I, I confirm that because I, I've talked to several people who are involved in some of these scientific studies and um, everything that you're saying. And they've also said that some of these like addictions, uh, whether it's to drugs or to, to, to lust and, and acting out, um, they tend to last, many of them, really strong for about 20 minutes. Mm. If you can make it through that period, you can be victorious. Isn't it interesting that the rosary, a well-prayed rosary, takes about 20 minutes? Yeah, right. This yeah. is heaven's kind of, you know, throwing us the, as we're almost ready to drown the, the, the life jacket. You know, grab right. hold of this, take it, and pull you out of this, and you'll make it. And I mean, I just find that fascinating. To me, the rosary is therapeutic. It's healing. It replaces the filthy images you put into your mind through your right. eyes with holy images. Right. So we hear that all the time, right? If you want to get rid of something and acquire rid of a vice and acquire a virtue, you got to you know fill that void with something. Well, that's what the the images in the rosary mentally. We're meditating upon sacred, saving images, mysteries. And so for men especially, I believe the rosary is a huge antidote to the pornographic filth of the age that we're living in. I really do. Amen. I do too. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Yep. The rosary is really the, the weapon for our times. Yeah. You know, We've been given it in our age. And, and how, what, what a great God we have. Because... Uh, the 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 uh, the demonic uh, spirits that are that are just ravaging people and 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 don't we know that the rosary has been given by God that power mm -hmm. uh, to overcome these these evil spirits? I you know I was with uh, a couple of exorcists uh, the other day and uh, they were talking about this whole topic that we're on right now and 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 how you know there, there's a lot of ways that we can open doors to. The divine life and and the, the and and the, uh, the 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 influx of the Holy Spirit and and just letting that that river of grace flow in our lives, but there's also many ways that we can open up to demon to the demonic, and I, I I often tell people I said if they're having problems in their home or they're having you know noises or this or that and other thing, one of the things I'll ask when the kids aren't around is anybody click clicking on porn, you know, because that is a portal. And so if you, if you, and even if you've been doing that and, and you've overcome it, get a priest into your home to do some cleansing, right? Mm -hmm. To cl clean, clean house, sure. uh, do some exorcism prayers and, and a blessing of that house and get it cleaned up again. And then like we say with St. Joseph, be that portal as the spiritual head of your house, be that portal that brings not demons, but holiness and grace into your home. Right, Father? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I love it. And, you know, I, I travel a lot, so I, I end up staying in hotels quite a bit. I bless that room every time. Yep. You don't know what happened in that room, right? You don't exactly. know what's going on, what's, what uh, evil things have, have taken place there. So bless, bless that place. And if, I, if you would do that for a hotel room, you certainly should be doing it for your home, right? Uh, right. Blessed salt. Uh, all, bring it all that, all the arsenal, you know, and, yeah, exactly. and uh, absolutely. Well, and let me, let me jump on that one too, that, I mean, someone listening might say, well, sure, father, you can bless the room. You're a priest. Well, yeah, but I do the exact same thing. Cause I travel a lot as well. And I carry with me 
in my backpack here, I've always got a little bottle of blessed salt. Yep, and absolutely. I will sprinkle it. I'll, I'll put it under the mattress. I'll put it yeah. behind the TV stand. I'll put it above the little doorway. I'll put it in places where there, the housekeeper probably is not going to clean it up later. <laughs> right. uh, you know, and, and I'll do it in my own home. Um, holy water fonts, sprinkle holy water. Us husbands and fathers, bless your wife, bless your Absolutely. children with holy water. Absolutely. You know, even when my sons come over, I bless them before they leave. You know, um, I know my son blesses his kids, and and my son-in-law blesses yep. his my my daughter and his kids. You have that spiritual authority. Y and the exorcists talk about that, and yep. and I do binding prayers too as the head of my house. I spiritually, in the name of Jesus, the precious blood of our Lord, I bind the demons. Get away from my wife and my children. I bind you, and in the name of Jesus, send you to the foot of the cross. You know, we men have to take that authority back. Yes. And, you know, and so anybody listening, watching, it's not just Father Calloway and Father Heilman who can do that. We, it's not the same, I know, with regards to being, I'm not a priest, but as the spiritual head of my home, I've been given that position of spiritual authority, yep. and I'm, I'm darn well going to use it. I'm going <laughs> to engage with that. Like you said, Father, Absolutely. bring out the weapons. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's what brings us back to St. Joseph, because remember— right. St. Joseph was not a priest, right? But he was the head of the Holy Family. And he's, right. some of his titles, I love. He's the guardian, right? Guardians are strong, you know? Right. And so he's, he's the, the, the pillar of families. A pillar is a foundation, you know? Uh, he's the glory of domestic life. We're talking, we, those titles of St. Joseph and his litany, I, I encourage all the listeners to look at the litany of St. Joseph again, you know, terror of demons. Yeah. We're talking. Good stuff here. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and again, um, this gets back to your book, uh, Father. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for, for being just a holy man of God. Um, you, your listening to the Holy Spirit is setting up a year, I believe, that's going to be full on spiritual warfare. And mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know about you, and I think I know about you, but I'm, I'm really hopeful because. I see St. Joseph's rising up yeah. in, in the coming year, in this is 2020. You said it's what, the 75th anniversary? 150th. 150th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. And, and perfect, perfect, perfect. I yeah. see St. Joseph's rising up. I see them taking hold of their authority as St. Joseph's, not in a toxic masculinity way, all right, but as a servant leader, okay? That, 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 that cares deeply for their family and wants to usher in God's blessing and grace into their homes, not any demons. And, and so, um, Father, I can't thank you enough. This has been incredible. And uh, I hope we could have you back again uh, sometime. But uh, yeah. God bless you. And uh, if you could, could you end uh, by giving uh, our, our listeners, our viewers a blessing? Absolutely, Father. You right. bet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this blessed time. We pray for the cloak of St. Joseph, our spiritual father, to be over us, to protect us, to help us to draw closer to Jesus and Mary, to grow in holiness and virtue. Bless our families, our loved ones, our homes, our parishes, our diocese, our entire church. We pray for a new time of St. Joseph to be ushered in so that we can restore order to our church, so that we can restore order to our families. And we especially pray for all of those who are most in need. We ask this blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Father. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Good to have you with us. Thanks, all right. brothers. All right.